Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Cinnamon Stitches. I am your yarn host Jennifer. Today's video is going to be short and sweet and to the point. Because this week has been kind of crazy. Um, so because I recorded several of this week's videos ahead of time. <laughs> I know what the videos are because I wrote them down. But I also feel extremely discombobulated and out of sorts. I don't have tea prepared for today because I didn't know until right now what I was going to actually serve myself for. I didn't know what video I was even going to do today. Um, mostly because it was Easter, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about how our Easter went. I'm going to give you a life update a little bit more so than the one that you got on Easter Sunday or on Monday because we had some extra videos in there. Um... Cause I like sharing with you guys about what we're doing. Like you guys like hearing about my family and all that good stuff. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that. I have happy mail right here from Wanda. Um, we're gonna show that too. Wanda actually sent mail for everybody. She didn't just send mail for cinnamon stitches. She sent mail for a little man got some treats. Mr. Cinnamon got some treats. Juju got some beads. So totally, totally thankful. Thank you so much, Wanda. Wanda has formerly been known on this channel as Tawanda because I love that movie and I was watching it the last time she sent me Happy Mail. <laughs> so with that, I know you can't see Bentley, but he is back there in his doggy bed behind this box. Being a sweet little boy. He followed me upstairs to take a shower because he could not live five seconds without me and then laid outside of the shower the entire time I was taking a shower with his feet on the glass door staring at me through the window and I tried to get him to step into the shower so I could wash him off because he's really muddy and he kind of stinks a little bit um he has um some of his because he's a mixed breed he has different types of fur on different parts of his body so the fur towards his back end is more like horse hair it's kind of coarse and like dry and um it holds odor really bad and so he needs to be washed up. But he refused to get in the shower, so I couldn't even do that. And I have a wound, so I wasn't going to fight him. I was the stupidest wound ever, too. I was literally cutting eggs to make deviled eggs for Easter. And apparently, I was holding the egg like this, and I was cutting the eggs like this. And the knife was too sharp, and it cut me right in the crease. So it's in my natural crease. It burns quite a bit <laughs> and now it's starting to heal a little bit because it's the following day and it's itching in the inside and I'm hoping to God that this doesn't set off a reaction in my hand because usually when I start itching it's not good and then a flare-up is coming and flare-ups are bad and flare-ups make me go to urgent care and get on steroids and I hate it um I don't like being on I mean I'm gonna be real truthful. I like being put on steroids because they give me high boosts of energy and I get a lot done while I'm on steroids, but I don't like taking medication in general. Um, so Easter was pretty good. Um, I kind of have lost a lot of what I used to have when the kids went, when the three girls were younger. So if you don't know, if you're new here, I have a birth daughter who was 18, but I also, for a good portion of their life, raised my two nieces who are 18 and 20. So when the three girls were in their younger years, I went all out for Easter. I decorated the heck out of the house. I put up all kinds of cute little stuff, like fun stuff, Dollar Tree stuff. Sometimes we would just make stuff and put it up because um, I didn't have, I mean, I never really, and we would go to the, I didn't have extra money to just go buy stuff for like Easter so we would do a lot of I still a lot of my decorations are from the thrift store or the Dollar Tree a lot of them <laughs> even now I have an entire Easter village that me and my mom collected while she was alive and it was little Easter egg houses with bunnies and little figurines from the Dollar Tree and it's pretty it's pretty amazing and epic um we collected a lot of pieces it was only out for two or three years they would come out at easter with new houses and we collected a lot of them because they were a dollar and it's the cutest easter village ever and i would always set that up and the girls would love moving the little bunnies around now most of the bunnies don't have ears <laughs> matter of fact i don't think any of the little bunnies because they're like little bunny figurines for like a village i don't think any of them have ears anymore um 
just from packing them away every year. They their ears break right off. Um, this year I really was not into Easter at all. I was I wasn't into Valentine's Day. I really didn't want to decorate Christmas, and it's not generally that's a bad sign for me. Generally, it's like oh she's in bad mental health if she doesn't want to decorate because I love decorating. And it's not so much the bad mental health that's causing me to not want to decorate. It's just I'm kind of at the age where I'm like, why? Why am I bothering? Like, well, why all this hassle for one day of the year? And I mean, that could be a mental health thing. It could also be an age thing. It could also be I am busier now in my life than I have ever been in my life. And when I was mothering just those three girls, I was a stay-at-home mom. So I had a lot of extra time. And I wasn't working. I was completely and utterly devoted to all things mom and wife. And it's not that I'm not now, but I have other priorities as well. And like I try to balance everything out. So I have me time, work time, mom time, wife time, which leaves me feeling very splintered sometimes. Um, yeah, so I, I just, this year I was not really into it. I, I don't know. I don't know. So what happened was I decorated for Valentine's Day late. <laughs> I usually have the decorations up for an entire month. So I'll start like February 1st. I'll have Valentine's Day up all the month of February. March. I will do all the month of March for um, St. Patrick's Day. All Or back in the day because my niece, her birthday is in March. Um, we would do stuff for her birthday on her birthday which usually coincided with St. Patrick's Day which was fantastic because she loved corned beef. She still may but I have no idea. Um, and then April in a general sense April is usually Easter and then we would have Easter but um, this month it was like this year it was like oh everything kind of like balled up together and I decorated for Valentine's Day and I didn't decorate for St. Patrick's Day until like three days before St. Patrick's Day, I think. <laughs> and then I decorated for Easter last week. Or not last week. Yeah, it was about a week before Easter I decorated for Easter. And um, the reaction I got from Little Man when he came from home from school and saw that I decorated was well worth it. Because Juju didn't notice and didn't care. Mr. Cinnamon didn't notice at all. And he doesn't care. But little man came in and I have porch sitters. It's Mickey and Minnie holding Easter baskets on my front porch. And I put those out so he immediately knew. And he knew noticed that the Valentine's Day wreath was down. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> and so he came in the house and he immediately didn't say hi, nothing to me. He's looking like. And then when he saw the Easter Village, his whole face lit up. And I was like, that's why we did it. That's why we did it. Right there. And then he's looking at the mantle because I decorated the mantle and he's looking, you know, here and there. I did not. I can't find half of my decorations. As a matter of fact, I didn't find most of my St. Patrick's Day decorations until I went and found the Easter decorations. And I didn't find all of my Easter decorations. And the reason that is is because Mr. Cinnamon goes in there like every three months and just moves everything around. And he's cleaning the garage. But he's not actually getting rid of anything that's important that needs to get rid of. Like, there's a box in there. I have a Mickey Mouse mirror on my wall, and he has kept the box for over a year now. And I keep telling him, why are you holding on to that box? Because there is styrofoam in the box that's shaped like Mickey Mouse's head. He's going to use as a template to make me a pin board one day. One day. I mean, we could absolutely use the mirror that's hanging on the wall in our bedroom for a template. But no, he's going to keep the styrofoam in the box. <laughs> So, with that, um, we also did not dye eggs this year for the first time ever. And generally when we dye eggs, it's usually me and Juju and sometimes Mr. Cinnamon will come in because little man cannot be bothered to sit and wait and stare at a bowl waiting for an egg to change color. Like, it bores him. He will dye one single egg and then he's off doing his other things. If you don't know, he has ADHD. He has a very short attention span. This bores him. Well... We bought the dye this year and he just did not seem interested at all in it until Easter night and then he had a full meltdown and he cried hysterically that we missed Easter egg dyeing and he wants to dye Easter eggs because otherwise we wasted daddy's money. 99 cents. 
he was very upset that we wasted daddy's money and I'm like I looked at him I was like you've had too much sugar you're exhausted you need to go upstairs and go to bed because he was like out of hand like freaking out crying hysterical <laughs> it's not that serious I was like my man you don't even like boiled eggs you won't eat them we already made the eggs into deviled eggs. I can't go back and dye them. They're in our stomach. <laughs> it's not that serious. And I'm not going to boil a bunch of eggs to dye them. And we don't dye raw eggs. I don't know why. We just don't. Um, but, yeah. I don't really like dyeing eggs anyway. It is messy. I, my fingers always get discolored. I always spill some on the table. <laughs> it's messy. I was kind of glad we didn't do that. We still did the Easter egg hunt. He still got an Easter basket. Juju still got an Easter basket. We played with Silly Street in the backyard. Oh, we cooked a nice ham, ham meal with cheesy potatoes. And um, I made a new recipe for green beans. So me and Juju have been making um, flavored butters. And we, we use flavored butters for, like, you put it on anything, but we do lemon butter for our steak. And it's really, really good with a little bit of goat cheese. And all it is is it's butter with a little tiny bit of lemon juice in it. You make sure the butter is soft, but definitely not melted. Otherwise, it'll separate. And you put lemon zest in there, like the peel. And you mix it up and you let it set and the butter is lemon flavored. Mr. Cinnamon prefers basil butter, which is just basil mixed up in butter. Um, you got to use fresh basil, not not the dried stuff. The dried stuff is not good. You got to use fresh basil. And you make basil butter. He prefers that. So I had, I had lemon butter left over in the refrigerator. And I was like, I'm going to use this on the green beans. And I've never cooked green beans this way. Now, it was those nasty green beans that you pop in the microwave and you heat them up that never fully get cooked. That For some reason, frozen vegetables just don't cook properly in the microwave. They just don't. They seem to get cold faster. I don't know. I don't know what it is about the science of that, but I don't really... Like, I, I'll take frozen vegetables and I'll cook them thoroughly in a pan or in the stove or so, in the oven even, and they will taste better. But for some reason, microwaving them, they don't turn out. So what I did is I microwaved them. I cooked them till they said they were cooked, which they were not. They were still cold. And then I pulled them out, and then I tossed them in the lemon butter that was left over. I mixed in garlic, salt, and pepper. I think that's all I put on them. And then I finished cooking them in the oven and they were very good green beans. They were very good and the lemon just kind of made them taste so much fresher and brighter, which is really good because I mean the cheesy potatoes and the ham were heavy, starchy, like, you know. So dinner was good. <coughs> dinner was definitely good. Um Mr. Cinnamon took a nice long nap on the couch. Generally, he is the type to help me cook dinner. He usually cooks the meat. He cooks the turkey he, on Thanksgiving. He cooks the um, beef roast on Christmas. He cooks the ham on Easter, and I do all of the rest. And this year, and it's been the past couple holidays, he's just been like, mm, I'm going to go sleep on the couch. <laughs> Which makes me want to punch him, <laughs> because... I'm not doing all this work by myself. It's not going to happen. We've been together all these years, 24 years now. I'm not going to start doing all the work now. That's not going to happen. That does not work in our world. And so when dinner was done, he's all, he looked at me and he pushed, I don't remember what food he pushed towards me. He's all, these need to go in the refrigerator. And I gave him the death stare. I was like, yeah, they need to go in the refrigerator and you didn't help me cook. So you're going to clear the table. And then he did the dishes. So <laughs> it was all good. It all worked out. So, Easter was good. Um, even though I was not really feeling the holiday at all. Um, it, it turned out good for the best. My hands are dry. That might be why they're itching. Where's my lotion? There was a little, that's right there. Plain view. Um, they're feeling really dry and that might be contributing to the itchiness. 
I haven't been noticing when I get out of the shower, like my hands just are so dry that they feel stiff. And I got to lotion up. And I used to never need to be lotioned up when I was younger. Like I was just constantly just perfectly moist. So, all right. Now, this Happy Mail is from Wanda. She has sent me about 15 emails in the past two weeks. <laughs> She was showing me all of her. She made a um, version of the Pico's Bill Top. She's really proud of it. She said I could show it on here, but I'm not. I, I'm not one to do that. Like that's extra work for me to edit in videos. I, that's why I really like the Facebook group, and I know that not everybody wants to join the Facebook group, but that's the best way to show off to other people, other like-minded people, your works of art, is to post it in the Facebook group. Because I don't really. I don't put pictures of other people on my videos um for a lot of reasons but like editing is the main one it's, it's extra editing to have to put in pictures and stuff but I totally appreciate because I love seeing I mean she looked fabulous in her cute little shirt she almost made it crop top size <laughs> and she's got the this cute little figure and so it looked beautiful on her and then she said she was sending she asked permission if it was okay for her to send easter candy for little man I was like yeah you can have candy I'm not a restrictive parent um, if he had developed food allergies like Juju, obviously we would filter out the food that has the allergens in it, um, and then go from there. But, uh, no, I don't, I don't restrict his candy and stuff like that. I mean, sometimes I'm like, okay, you've had enough candy because you're acting psychotic because sugar affects him really badly. And, um, if he has too much of it. But other than that, I mean, he doesn't eat enough sugars in his daily diet that that happens very often. Um, so I already gave everybody their goodies. She also gave me a list of what was for who. And she told me to print it off so that I had it with me when I was opening the package. But I don't have a printer. <laughs> I had a printer on the shelf that used to live back there. And I got rid of it because the cost of ink is ridiculous. And I was finding that we were printing off things that didn't necessarily need to be printed off. And it was wasting so much ink. And so if we were to print, I am so sorry. I don't think I've had any caffeine today either, which I also slept horrible last night. I've been having the most god awful nightmares every night. And my stomach has been giving me a lot of issues. And because of those two things, I have not been sleeping and I'm exhausted. And I know that it's showing because I'm yawning constantly because I'm so tired. I want to go to sleep. But when I'm done filming this video, I have to put it on my computer and then I have to go to the grocery store grocery shop because we didn't have time to go grocery shopping this weekend because it was Easter and all the other things were happening. And uh, yeah, I have. To, if we don't go grocery shopping, little man doesn't have breakfast. <laughs> I also, I need to... Um, get back to being more strict with my eating because I have I've been sliding this year a lot and I'm not eating like candy I mean I had candy yesterday Con true confessions I had candy yesterday Mr. Cinnamon made me an Easter basket and that's the end of that now from now on it's we're, I have passed out most of my candy to the kids like here here's what's left over I didn't eat yesterday um that also could be contributing to me being sleepy because my sugar's probably off Totally lost my train of thought there. Oh, so I need to, I need to, when we go to the grocery store, I need to really think about what I'm, what I'm buying myself so that I eat the proper foods instead of, I've been eating fr freezer foods, which is horrible, horrible for you because there's a lot of carbohydrates in freezer foods. Um, so I need to go back and I need to do some meal prep for myself. I have not gained, I'm, I've gained like eight pounds this year, which is not horrible. Um, but I need to get that eight pounds back off and I need to go back to being more mindful and being more careful with what I'm eating. Because even though my blood sugar is fantastic right now, I don't want a spike and I, I don't want to slip. I don't want to slip. I don't, I don't want to slip. I just want to be back like I feel better when I'm eating on my very restrictive diet I really do and please for the love of God 
you're listening to this and you think you have diet advice for me, you don't. Trust me, you don't because you don't know the whole story. Do not put diet advice in the comments. I don't want them. I will remove the comment and possibly block you if I find it rude. Now with that, I appreciate that you guys care about me and you want the best for me, but honestly, unless you know the full story of my health and my food allergies and my restrictions, you cannot give me advice. You cannot. I don't care if it worked for you, if it worked for your brother, it worked for your auntie, your uncle, your sister, your cousin. My system is different than yours and theirs. So with that being said, happy mail. I'm going to be honest. I opened this on Saturday. I don't even remember everything that's in it. <laughs> so she sent me yarn. I believe she said that this was... She sent this to see if I could spin it. This is a wool acrylic viscose blend. And it is a really thick roving. This is about how thick um, Little Man spins his yarn. It reminds me of his yarn a lot. And because this is spun, I don't think I can I can make it any thinner to spin it. Um, as a matter of fact, I know that I can't because it's spun together like it's not. It's already processed into wool, but it's still really pretty. And I'm still grateful for it because I can still make something out of that. And that's Cozy from K and C. And then I know that I can spin with this because I've been spinning with it. Matter of fact, where's that? This is what it looks like spun. Because <laughs> this is just unspun acrylic. It's just a big chunk. And I have been spinning it. And that's what it looks like spun up. So. That's fantastic. Because what I would really like to do is spin enough of the, This is going to be. The amount of time it's going to take me to spin this one. And the other one which is back there. That was about 100 grams. These are 10 10 ounce balls so in order for me to spin this 10 ounces into those it's gonna take it's gonna take me over a year to do both of them but I'm gonna put that over there with the other one and if I get enough of those processed I can make us myself like a garment with that yarn and it will be fantastic so totally appreciate that then she sent me some ice yarns, which is so funny because I literally just filmed yarn. I didn't film yarn. I did film yarn. I filmed a video that's going to come up on Thursday that's featuring ice yarns. And it's featuring this exact yarn, which was so funny because I had just recorded the video. As a matter of fact, it's in the bucket down there. I just filmed the video, I think Thursday. And it's Saturday, I went to the post office. And I'm like, I literally, and is this color and everything? This is Picasso. It's beautiful. And so now I have 13 balls of this. 13? Maybe. Maybe there was only 8 in the pack. 9, 10, 11. There's between 11 and 13 balls. I believe. I believe. Doesn't matter. It's going to make something beautiful. It's really, really nice, pretty yarn. Do you ever smell yarn that someone sends you? Or... Probably not, because you guys don't get sent yarn that frequently. When I get Happy Mail, I always smell it. And I always smell it, and I'm curious, like, is that what they smell like? Because to me, smell is a very, um, it's a powerful thing. Like, I have really strong sensitivity to smell. But also, at the same time, there are a lot of smells that are so comforting to me. Like, I could just sit and sniff it. And, like, and for me, when I get Happy Mail... And this is probably really weird, and I apologize this is coming off really weird, okay? But sometimes when someone has been a loyal subscriber or very kind and very just like, like I said, Wanda has emailed me a lot in the past couple of weeks, like easily 15 times. And while I can't always get back to her right away, like I still, I, like, I make a note that I need to respond to Wanda, like, and then sometimes she'll send me the email again because she thinks I didn't see it. I saw it. I just didn't have time to respond to it yet. But that kind of interaction to me is endearing. And Wanda has also sent me happy mail in the past. Wanda has been really kind to me. And 
supportive and just sweet and thoughtful and so for me i smell this i'm like okay is that what wanda smells like and then in my head when i'm sniffing it i'm imagining hugging her and not drinking in her smell okay i know that's probably weird i used to do that with my mom a lot because my mom smelled like cigarettes and vanilla all the time like really strong vanilla and it was like her fragrance and there's still times where i will smell it and i would just be in the moment of what it's like drinking in her smell and giving her she gave the best hugs and that's that's why i know it probably sounds really weird so yeah and then she sent me this one which is the other rainbow version of picasso which has eight in it so that tells me the other one probably has eight in it eight nine ten it's still eleven so there's the number for those of you that do the ice thing. This is a darker version of the rainbow. This is so pretty. My ice has never been... Yeah. My ice smells like this one. It has never been out of the package, so it smells like machine oil. That other one smells like someone. <laughs> it smells like a person. Like somebody's been playing with it. This one stinks, though. Um, and that's just something... And I don't know if it's the bag. I don't know... I don't know if it's the bag that ice uses or if it's the way that they process the yarn at ice, but sold as is, do not separate. Um, I know it's ice yarn stinks. It's such a pretty color. Isn't that beautiful? And then last but certainly not least, she sent me some tea from Tea Leaves. Which is the brand that my picture came from. And I believe Wanda is the one that sent me the tea leaves. If I recall correctly, if I am misremembering, I apologize, but I get a lot of Happy Mail and I don't have a good memory. But I believe this the original tea leaves was from Wanda. Oh, the, these sound so good. And she gave me... When you order from a lot of these tea companies, tea leaves specifically sends you little tea candies. Um, I always give these to a little man because he likes them. These are both green tea. Green tea latte and citrus green tea. All right, and then there's two little one cup packs and then a big pack. These flavors sound so delicious. Um, a lot of times when I get tea, you guys don't know. You guys are like, I love this tea, you're gonna like it. And I if, I might have different tastes than you. So there's been times where I've gotten tea, I was like, ooh, I don't like that tea. It's even been tea that I've ordered. Ooh, I don't like that tea. But I feel bad because, like, it was sent to me or, like, I ordered it or whatever reason. Um, because I'm very picky with my flavors. I hate green tea. I hate green tea. Mr. Cinnamon loves it. I hate it. I will not drink it. I don't like the mouth feel. Like, it kind of dries my mouth out. And it's just, I don't like green tea. And I don't like black tea a whole lot. And so, like, because of that, <laughs> those teas usually go at the bottom of the list for me. These actually are... At, there are teas that I like. There's chai, white tea, and then rooibos, which is my favorite. But also my favorite flavor of all time is caramel. Like, I guess we're having tea. I'm not having it, but we're showing tea for tea, Tuesday tea. Um, this is hazelnut caramel rooibos. Rooibos is my favorite kind of tea. It's an African tea. It is my favorite. It has the, the less... It's the least tea flavored tea, if you know what I'm saying. You know, you think of when you think of like a black tea or an Earl Grey. I don't like those flavors. Um, Roybus is very neutral flavored. So it takes on like, des these are dessert teas. It takes on the flavors of dessert teas or fruit teas like a lot better. It just pairs with them better. Um, and Roybus is my fav favorite because it's not real strong. Or, um, some black teas have a stank to them. So this is hazelnut caramel rooibos tea and the ingredients are rooibos, my favorite, apple, love apple, cocoa nibs, love it, natural caramel flavor, marigold flowers, natural hazelnut and chestnut flavors, and blue corn flowers. I've just recently at Christmas time discovered how much I really like the flavor of chestnut and hazelnut teas. I cannot wait to dig into this. Um, I'm going to open it because I want to smell it. Because it sounds like it's going to smell so good. Oh, I took the wrapper down too far. Now I can't get the Ziploc part open. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah. The 
That smells so good. I don't know why so many teas put blue corn flour in there. Does blue corn flour actually have a flavor? Let's see. Did I find one? I taste nothing. So I wonder if the bloom corn flour is for an actual flavor or if it's for color, you know. <laughs> Maybe it makes the tea more purple. I don't know. And then this one is white chai spice tea. It's a white, a white tea. The ingredients are ginger root, lemongrass, cinnamon bark, white tea, pineapple, cloves, dried coconut, cardamom, red peppercorn, apple pieces, natural spice flavor, and natural cinnamon. This one's probably going to taste Christmassy to me. And then Dancing Vanilla Bean, a chai tea. It says rooibos, ginger root, cinnamon bark, cloves, cardamom, vanilla, and orange peels. That one sounds really good to me too. So, feeling, see now, after I took the corn flour out of my mouth, now I can taste something. It's probably because I'm breathing. You know breathing actually helps your taste buds work better? <laughs> So, thank you so much, Wanda, for spoiling me. I don't know what I did to deserve your love and affection, but totally appreciative. Uh, little man was very excited about his peep. Um, she sent him a peep stuffy with some, I think there was peeps in it. And then she sent candy for the boys. And then Juju took off with her beads. I don't know, she's at the age where she just, thanks. <laughs> I know that she's appreciative, though. She's been working on, um, she hasn't been filling the shop at all because she's, She's very overwhelmed with college and life right now, and she's isolating a little bit in her room. And she's not really doing anything to fill her shop. So I, I know that it's because she's overwhelmed with, with all the, the new things that she has to deal with in life, and that's fine. Um, we were talking about her getting a part-time actual real job in the summertime so that she gets used to being out in the real world amongst people because I think that's what she really needs in her life. Um, and the beads that she's been receiving, she's gotten beads a couple times this year in Happy Mail. She has been just making stuff for herself or for like whatever she wants to do with them, which I think is really positive. Her and I were talking and um, she said like running the shop was awesome and she loved having her own money and she she wishes she had the time and the energy to still do that because like it was financially helping her a lot she said but it became um it took the joy out of it for her and i looked at her I was like i know exactly what you're talking about and i started to talk to her about have you ever seen the movie hope floats it's got sandra bullock and um harry connick jr who i adore in it and he has a quote, and I can never remember the exact quote, and I can never find it to read it. But he's talking about his house. He's building a house. He was an, he was an architect in California, and he came back to Smithville, Texas, and he's painting houses and doing, like, side jobs for people. And she said, why, if you can do all this, are you painting houses? And he says to her, he said, um, something along the lines of the American dream you know, you take something you love and you try to twist it and and force it so that you can make money at doing that thing that you love. And basically what, what he was saying in the quote is that you do that until there's not, not even a spark of joy left in that. And I think a lot of us get, we get in that rut where, okay, well, we're making crochets and people are like, okay, you should sell that. People would love to buy your product. People would love... To buy your crochet you're so amazing at it and then we start doing markets and then we start trying to sell and we start pushing ourselves because someone told us we should make money at it and that's a good idea because we're spending money at it and we really love doing it why not make a profit on it and you twist it and you turn it and you try to make a profit at it and you destroy what was relaxing and joyful about it and um I told her that I feel a little bit of that sometime with the channel. There's so much pressure behind it. Um, there's so much stress to make content, to, to do this, to do that, that takes the joy out of it for you. And that's where um, 
um, craft block comes from. That's where where my 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 crojo disappears is when I'm feeling too stressed out and pressured from all the stuff that I put on myself to create a job for myself to make the money from it. And I have seen other people on the, the internet. I have had people that I'm friends with. They just, they do that. They start doing markets or they start trying to make more videos to try to force money out of it. And they lose everything that they loved about it. And I saw it happening with her with beads. She was so busy making stitch markers for the shop that she stopped making jewelry. And jewelry is what made her happy. And she doesn't even crochet or knit, so the stitch markers were not using, she, they're not useful to her. And then she really liked making the, the sun catchers, she, and they're beautiful, and she loved making them. And then she burnt herself out on those. And so she's like, <laughs> I watched it happen. I could see it was happening. And so that's where she's at. I've had a couple of people ask, does she have anything in her shop? I'd love to support her. She does not. I don't know if she ever will. She also has been making soap. And she had intended to put soap in the shop because she's all, I'm making soap, but there's no way we're ever going to be able to use up all this soap. I might as well put some of them in the shop. And they're beautiful bars of decorative soap. And they are fragranced, so they smell delicious. Um, they have oatmeal in them, so they're really good for your skin. Like, I have been using her soap, and it's really good on even my eczema skin. And I was like, that might be a good idea to put some in the shop. And she's like, hmm. I don't know if I want to do that. One, she's fearful no one's going to buy her soap. Two, she doesn't want to twist it and turn it and make it into something that she hates doing or she's doing it for whatever reason. And um, the reason she's making soap is because Grandpa, Mr. Cinnamon's Grandpa, used to send us soap every Christmas. And he called it Lamone's Ugly Soap. And it was just oatmeal soap from a very basic recipe that he made himself. And it was the only soap for years I could use on my children because they both have eczema. My niece had a, has eczema. Her eczema is actually really bad. She might have something other than eczema, but she refuses to go to the doctor to get it looked at. Because um, she gets really bad patches and it almost looks like it might be psoriasis or something else like that. But she refuses to go to the doctor. Um, but that grandpa's ugly soap was like the only thing that helped for a long time and he's been gone for seven years now and we're on our last bar of soap from him <laughs> so it's kind of sad and we've been on that last bar for a long time it's not something we use every day in the shower it's something we use and then it gets sealed up and then we use it again like she's been she's been the only one that's been allowed to use it because i'm not needing it um i'm fine with the soaps that i'm using but um, she's having a lot of skin flare up, so she's been the only one. She's using it sparingly. She's keeping it nice and clean, and like she's trying to make that bar of soap last as long as she can. And so we talked to Grandma about it, and Grandma's all, "I'm gonna send you do some stuff." And so she sent her, she sent us one of Grandpa's soap books with his actual writing in it, which meant everything to us. And then she sent us Grandpa's scale so that she could weigh out the ingredients, and she sent us Grandpa's spoon. So Juju had to go buy some extra ingredients and stuff like that, but she um, she made some really, really nice soap. And I'm kind of supporting her in the fact that she shouldn't have to sell it. If, if we have extra, we can store it. I mean, soap doesn't really go bad. <laughs> so, <coughs> and um, yeah, I don't even know how I got on that subject, but I'm gonna let you guys go. Tomorrow we have a small purchase from Revolution Fibers, which this up here will give you a hint on that. I finished my rainbow shirt. <laughs> um, I should probably take a picture in that and put it for the thumbnail if I can remember to do that. Thursday is going to be another throwback Thursday, so we're opening a yarn bucket and we're talking about some of the, the yarn that's in there and some possible ideas of what we can make with that yarn. And then um, Friday, I haven't filmed that video yet either, but Saturday I'm going to the James River Yarn Crawl. So I think Friday is going to be me prepping for the, the yarn crawl. I'm going to look up some tips for myself. I'm also going to talk about budgeting money for an event like that because little yarn shops are expensive and 
I am on a very tight budget this year or this month not just this year but this month because I have to pay my quarterly taxes and I have to make a car payment I have I am very limited with funds and um, I'm gonna talk about budgeting and I'm gonna give you guys some ideas of what I'm doing to stay on budget and stay keep track and I'm gonna give you guys tips and stuff that I have researched and we're gonna talk about what is a yarn crawl what is happening at the yarn crawl what are they doing what am I doing I'm gonna give you some locations of the yarn crawl in case you guys want to go visit the yarn crawl is from I think it starts on the 5th and goes through I want to say the 13th but it might be the 11th that's well, probably the 13th um, so it's a week-long event at five yarn stores but even if you're not in this area and you don't know what the heck the James River is which you should if you're an American because that's history <laughs> um, my brain totally stalled there are yarn crawls all over the place you just have to research yarn crawl in your area on Google and a lot of times it'll pop up and it'll say this store that <sighs> you might find yarn stores you didn't even know existed which is what is exactly happening with the James River yarn crawl I knew of dances with wool because I've been to her store I do not know about the other four stores so I have not been to any of the other four stores and I'm really excited to go to visit those stores I also may see if Mr. Sidman is willing to stop at a sixth store because there's another store that's in Richmond that I enjoy going to called Knitting Bee and I would really like to pop over into her store because I really enjoy her store but then that goes into timing, budgeting, and all of that good stuff. So we're also probably doing some of the stores on the Saturday and some of the stores on that Sunday because um, that's a long drive to get to Norfolk and Virginia Beach. So with that, I'm going to let you go. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you tomorrow. Bye guys.